Well, I, I think one of the things that is, is very much part of the scientific conversation right now are, are the peer statistics. And um, there's, a, there's a bit of a disconnect between how likely we think it is that there's other life in the universe and how likely we think it is that they have visited us. Um, the former is, is absolutely fine to talk about in normal circumstances. Um, the latter, you will get folks in the conversation that are, have a knee-jerk reaction, um, assume people are crazy, assume that it's a conspiracy, and assume whatever you might. Um, but where I think things are really interesting scientifically, and, and what I think a lot of people might not realize, is that we can think about the statistical likelihood actually academically pretty rigorously. Right. And when you go through the numbers, this is something I think is actually really quite extraordinary. You know, we, we have a pretty good number of the total number of stars in the galaxy. We have a pretty good number of what fraction of those are like the sun. And we have a pretty good understanding of how many of those are likely to have Earth-like planets. We have a pretty good understanding of how many of those may or may not have liquid water. And when you run the numbers, ballpark, just in our galaxy, something like 10 billion potential places for life to emerge exist. Now, of those 10 billion, do they all have life? Well, that would be a lot of life. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so maybe only one in a thousand form life, and maybe of those only one in a thousand become technologically advanced, and, and we have this attrition that goes down. But at the end of the day, it's not a crazy statistical estimate to think that there ought to be hundreds, if not thousands, of other technologically advanced life forms in the galaxy. Now, we're making a lot of assumptions, and I want to be clear about that, because none of that is testable. And we actually are getting into the realm of alien psychology and whether or not they would choose to venture out into space, and that's totally uncharted territory. But, you know, just in terms of statistics and what we can talk about academically, it seems like it's pretty likely they're out there. And, and one more quick thing I want to put on the table um, for folks, folks who may not know. Let's say that there are a thousand civilizations in our galaxy that have become technologically advanced and have survived their technological adolescence without killing themselves. Um, if they were evenly sort of randomly distributed through the history of the galaxy, what that means is that we are the babies and our next oldest sibling is on the order of 10 million years more advanced than we are. And I think that's really important to keep in mind. I mean, again, we're making a lot of assumptions, but even if the youngest civilization after us, our next oldest sibling, is 10 million years more advanced than we are, what type of technological capabilities are they gonna have? I mean, just 100 years ago, we were barely flying airplanes, and now we're going to space. So think about where we could be in 10 million years. It's really, truly unfathomable. And so that's where I think this intersectionality between what is possible and could they have come to Earth and what would they look like if they have come to Earth? To me, the rubber hits the road. And one of the things I, I tend to think is that if they are 10 million or 100 million years more technologically advanced than we are, and they don't want us to see them, we're not going to see them. 